Hey folks, welcome back. This is Chris with Indaba Africa. Today is the 12th of October, 2020. And today I was going to focus on Columbus Day and the Supreme Court confirmation hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett. That was the news for today. However, President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa has issued a letter, which is a pathetic excuse to address the situation that's taking place in South Africa. Uh, and let me be very clear about this. I've seen commentary for some folks who are trying to be balanced and say, well, just give the government a little more time. They're trying. They mean well. No, they're not trying and they don't mean well. This situation is a consequence of the ANC's intentional undermining of security in the rural areas. It's intentional neglect of security. It's intentional racialization of the public sphere, turning South Africa into a racially charged society. That is the actions of the economic freedom fighters and many in the African National Congress, including the president of the country himself, who recently went on television and basically said that the reason that there is gender-based violence in South Africa is because white South Africans by nature are racist. What one has to do with the other and the fact that neither is even factually correct is beyond me. But that's what the president of South Africa does. In addition, he lied to the world in January of 2018. The audacity to lie for something that's demonstrably provable. How stupid does he think the world is? And now, two and a half years later, still has not addressed this issue. His minister of police is feckless. The police do not care about what's happening in rural South Africa. They don't. Maybe some police do, but as a national service, they do not. The fact that the police were caught completely unprepared, unaware, unrehearsed, and no situation like this should ever be a situation which police are unprepared. How in the world did they not know that there would be angry people showing up on the 6th of October? Now, most of those people were well-behaved. Very little happened despite the lies and misrepresentations in the media. And even the president, Ramaphosa himself, has misrepresented what happened at Senegal, calling it violent protest. There were no violent protests. There were peaceful protests. There was a storming inside the court building, not the police station, and a single vehicle was turned on its side. But the context that was not shared, that criminal act, in fact, it was. Then the government shows up with seven vehicles to arrest a single person, a 52-year-old portly farmer. What a threat he is. Meanwhile, the government is silent as the economic freedom fighters chant, kill white South Africans, kill the Boer, repeatedly. They're allowed to get away with that nonsense. We see the racially charged commentary of Malema and his prison suit wearing members of parliament in parliamentary sessions. It goes on and on. No word from the ANC, no word from the president of South Africa. When the, when the leader of the economic freedom fighters calls for domestic terrorism against cliques over an advertisement from a third party, Theresa May, the government does nothing. The police are unprepared. 44 cliques locations around South Africa are assaulted, firebomb, petrol bomb, buildings looted, facilities destroyed. And where is the African National Congress in Ramaphosa? Silent. Nothing to say. People killed on a daily basis in South Africa. Where is the president? Silent. Nothing to say. Only when people protest the streets and rip up things and burn things does that get Ramaphosa and the ANC's attention. This is beyond pathetic. This letter, this, this letter is meant to mollify the farming community, to mollify those who are concerned about what's happening in South Africa. Make no mistake, folks, it's the government of South Africa that's racializing South Africa, not South Africans, certainly not white South Africans, and certainly not black South Africans. It is the government of South Africa and its opposition party, the Economic Freedom Fighters, who racialize society. This is an immoral equivalency document. President Ramaphosa, stick to the topic. The topic that you are discussing and the reason for the Senate call protest, the presence of people, was because they are fed up, they're hot full of plus mord, farm murders. That's what we're talking about here. And you know that. His moral equivalency. And he tells others what they need to do when it's the African National Congress-led government that has failed. Blaming others. Blaming the farmers. Blaming white South Africans by implication. These are vile comments. Those who think this is a measured letter are not reading the text of this letter. He's silent on EFF's rallies. He's silent on clicks attacks. He's silent on the service delivery violence attack on government property that occurred just today. We hear this nonsense with moral equivalency. Well, the EFF is justified and, and, and this was an attack on government property. They attack government property every single day, the EFF and its supporters. And people across South Africa tearing up roads with pickaxes, blocking traffic, burning local government councilors' offices. This happens all the time in South Africa. Not one mention 
of it's all right for people to be angry and respond because government property is destroyed. No, only when a single vehicle is tipped over on its side and catches fire is it a problem. And why is it a problem? Then? Because it was white South Africans. That's why. Stop your racialization. You know, there were a lot of black South Africans present in Senegal supporting those farmers. A lot. And there'll be a lot more in Senegal on the 16th of October. A lot more. So stop, stop your nonsense. We're not that stupid. We can see through it. Black, white, colored, Indian South Africans united against this violence that kills 60 people per day and kills innocent commercial farmers. A 21-year-old commercial farm manager, not even a farm owner, 21 years old, murdered, not just murdered, tortured, stabbed repeatedly, punched, attacked, hung from a post, the knife left in the ground to send a clear message. This is not random crime, as you claim in here. This is not a crime of opportunity. This is a political act. And you lie, President Ramaphosa, in an attempt to mollify people who are stupid or are sheep. The world is not that stupid. People of South Africa are united against this nonsense, against your corrupt government, which pilfers and steals and neglects South Africans, and your captured media. Virtually all the media in South Africa now have become captured, spouting party lines of the government, lying about events. We saw ENCA lie about what happened in Senegal as it was happening. And they weren't even present, simply getting videos that other people made and contorting and turning the story into something else. It's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. And shame, for shame, for shame on you, Cyril Ramaphosa. You, the one who's racialized everything in South Africa. You, Cyril Ramaphosa, who said that our economy is colonial and racist. I'm sorry, would that be the same economy that you got corrupt handouts of equity from entities as a consequence of your patronage connections to the African National Congress, which made you worth half a billion U.S. dollars, that corrupt and colonialist economy? Well, if that's your argument, I agree. Give it all back. Give it all back to the people of South Africa. Put it in a national sovereign wealth fund. How about you, like our president, not accept your salary instead of a little portion of it going to the solidarity fund? And who knows where that money's gone? Cyril Ramaphosa, this letter is shameful. If you think this is going to calm people down, if you think this is an honest letter, you are mistaken. You are wildly mistaken. Blaming the farmers and white South Africans for your failures, for your party's 26 years of failures. 26 years of failures. The NP failed itself repeatedly in so many ways for South Africans. You have failed as, as badly, if not worse. Some of the things blaming farmers for. There needs to be more collaboration between farm watch organizations, community policing. policing. Really? That means the police would actually have to want to cooperate with these groups. And we know that in many cases, they refuse to even talk to them or acknowledge them. So stop the lies. What you need to do is the three R's. R cubed. Retrain, resource, and redeploy the SAPs. Retrain them so that they learn how to be a proper community police organization and stop blaming communities that they're not. Resource them so they have the proper vehicles, equipment, and forensic things so they can actually investigate crimes and redeploy the police into rural areas so that rural South Africans have an opportunity to survive. Farmers need more readily provide access to lands to law enforcement officials. Why do farmers have to provide access to the lands? Murderers seem to have no difficulty accessing these lands. Why can't saps get on there on a legal basis? That's nonsense meant to blame farmers. We would be naive to assume that race relations in farming communities have been harmonious since the advent of democracy. What does that have to do with the issue at hand? Once again, blaming farmers. Also, it's a blanket statement. It's utter nonsense. We have examples of dozens of white South African farmers who go out of their way to help new black commercial farmers establish their businesses and their competition, yet they help them out of the goodness of their heart and their Christian values. We must work together to root out criminality. Really, really, really. And finally, he says here, we must not be blinded by our own prejudices to the suffering and pain of others. Really? Is this the same man who said that 4.8 million white South Africans by nature are racist? Work together. This is platitudes. It's simply platitudes, utter nonsense. You're not serious about this, Sir Ramposa. This is meant to mollify people. That's what this is, folks. It's meant to mollify. Well... I'm hot full too, and I'm not even South African. I'm so sick of this nonsense. I will cover this letter in more detail on my live stream, but this is my video for now about this, my initial response. As I said, it's raw. I said it wouldn't be emotional, but there's a little bit of a rant in here. I'm sick of this nonsense. Folks, this is the South African day. The African National Congress has shamed its legacy and failed South Africans, and that's the truth, and Ramaphosa cannot cover that up. Good luck, folks.